So let's talk about other important facts related to cardiovascular system. First is hemodynamics. So blood flow is directly proportional to the fourth power of radius of the blood vessel. Suppose this is the blood vessel with the radius R and this is the blood vessel with radius 2 R. So when the radius is doubled, the blood flow will be 16 times the normal blood flow. Similarly, resistance is inversely proportional to the fourth power of radius. That is, resistance will be reduced to 16 times where the radius is doubled. Velocity is inversely proportional to the square of radius. That is, radius. if the radius is doubled, the velocity will be reduced to fourth time. 1 by 4. Last is Reynolds number. Reynolds number is a unis, unit less quantity which determines the flow of the blood or flow of any fluid. Reynolds number is equal to rho V D by mu. Rho represents the density of the fluid. V represents the velocity. D represents the diameter that is 2R. And mu is the viscosity constant of that fluid. So Reynolds number is directly proportional to R. So Reynolds number is directly proportional to R. It is directly proportional to velocity and the density of the fluid but it is inversely proportional to viscosity. If the Reynolds number is less than 2100, the fluid will have laminar flow. If it is between 2100 to 4000, it will be in the transition. And more than 4000, the flow of the fluid will be turbulent. Similarly, if we are ascending very fast, very rapidly in the upper direction, there will be positive G force on our eyes and that will cause blackout. Similarly, if we are descending too fast, there will be negative G and there will be a red out of the vision. That was about hemodynamics. Now we will discuss vascular system and regional circulation of the blood. So this is the diagrammatic representation of vessels and our heart. Suppose this is our left side of heart. This part represents aorta. These are arteries. These are arterioles. Then we have capillaries, venules and veins. At last we have vena cava. Okay. So aorta contains 2% of total blood, 2% is in the aorta, 8% in the artery and 1% is in the arterioles. So total will be 11% of the blood in the body is situated in the artery. Capillary contains 5% of blood and veins have 55% of the blood in the body. Now aorta produces wind castle effect, wind castle effect is due to the stretching of this elastic lining of aorta. As we know that aorta is elastic in nature. So due to sudden flow of the blood in the aorta, there will be a stretch in the aorta and then in the diastolic phase, it will again come back to its normal position and this will push the blood in the forward direction. So this is wind castle effect, it is present in aorta or larger elastic arteries. Then we have arteries and then arterioles. Arterial produces maximum resistance in the circulation of the blood. Then we have capillaries for the exchange of the material from the blood to tissue and from the tissue to blood. After that we have venules and veins. These veins are called as capacitance vessels because they contain maximum amount of the blood in the circulation. So these are different functions of our vessels and how, how much blood they contain. Similarly the cardiac output will be maximum to liver. So the ratio of the cardiac output to total blood flow will be maximum for the liver that is 1500 ml of the blood is directly given to liver per minute. So the maximum portion of the cardiac output will be given to liver. Then we have kidneys with 1250 ml of blood, skeletal muscles, then we have brain, at last we have skin and heart. Heart has 250 ml of blood. If you observe the cut section of arteries and veins, we can see that the lumen of the artery is smaller than the lumen of the veins. Veins have larger lumen. But contrast to that, the thickness of the wall will be higher for artery than veins. Veins have thinner walls. Arteries have thicker walls. At last, we will see vascularity. That is the blood flow per unit mass per minute. So how much of the blood is flowing through an organ if it has 100 gram of tissue per minute. 
so maximum vascularity will be in the carotid body if we have 100 gram of the carotid body tissue it will have 2000 ml of blood per minute it is the maximum vascularity in the body so maximum vascularity is in the carotid body then we have kidney with 420 ml per minute per 100 gram of tissue then we have heart liver brain skin and last skeletal muscles so kidney and liver have maximum portion of cardiac output and have higher vascularity than brain